What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 220 1002 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you will learn about various types of malware and various tools and methods to remove and prevent malware. So let's talk about malware. So malware, which stands for malicious software, is any software or code intentionally designed to cause damage to a computer, server, client, or to gain unauthorized access to a computer network. A wide variety of malware types exist, such as you have ransomware and this is a type of malware that threatens to publish a victim's data or perpetually encrypt access to it unless a ransom is paid to decrypt it within a specified amount of time and this is also known as crypto viral extortion and the most famous ransomware attack was the WannaCry virus in 2017 which spread all over the world impacting mostly windows machines that had not been updated with security patches Next, we have a Trojan and a Trojan horse is any type of malware which misleads users of its true intent. Trojans are generally spread by some form of social engineering, such as executing an email attachment disguised to not appear suspicious or by clicking on fake advertisements on social media or anywhere else. Trojan payloads can be anything, but modern forms act as a backdoor to contact a controller, which can then have unauthorized access access to the affected computer. Next, we have keylogger. So keystroke logging is the action of recording the keys struck on a keyboard, typically covertly, so that a person using the keyboard is unaware that their actions are being monitored. Data can be retrieved by the person operating the logging program. Keylogger viruses can be delivered by way of a Trojan, phishing, or fake email attachment. Applying multi-factor authentication is one way to prevent a software keylogger attack and key Key loggers can be either software or hardware. Next, we have a root kit. So a collection of computer hacking software designed to enable access to a computer or an area of its software that is not otherwise allowed and often masks its existence or the existence of other software. This is known as a rootkit and some rootkits can perform key logging while other rootkits just simply take over the entire computer. Ridding a computer of a rootkit usually involves wiping the drive and reinstalling the operating system of the computer. Then we have a virus so a type of program when executed that replicates itself by modifying other computer programs and inserting its own code is known as a virus if the replication succeeds the affected areas are then said to be infected with a computer virus computer viruses generally require a host program the virus writes its own code into the host program when the program runs the written virus program is executed first causing infection and damage. Most virus attacks are spread with human assistance when users carelessly open attachments in their email. With the installation of antivirus from a reputable vendor, most computer virus attacks can be prevented. Next, we have a botnet. So a botnet is a number of internet connected devices, each of which is running one or more bots. Bots can be used to perform DDoS attacks, steal data, send spam, and allow the attacker to access the device and its connection. The owner can control the botnet using command and control software. Keeping a computer's antivirus updated can help prevent a botnet attack. Then we have a worm, so a Computer Worm is a standalone malware computer program that replicates itself in order to spread to other computers. It often uses a computer network to spread itself, relying on security failures on the target computer to access it. It will use this machine as a host to scan and infect other computers. When these new worm invaded computers are controlled, the worm will continue to scan and infect other computers using the computers as hosts, and this behavior will 
will continue. Fishing and other human errors are not required for worms to thrive. And then we have spyware. So this describes software with malicious behavior that aims to gather information about a person or organization and send such information to another entity in a way that harms the user. So for example, by violating their privacy or endangering their device's security, this behavior may be present in malware as well as in legitimate software. Multiple unwanted pop-up windows when surfing the internet may be an indicator of spyware on your system. So let's talk about some tools and methods. So the following are some of the tools and methods that are used to thwart malware, viruses, and hacking attacks. So the first one is antivirus, anti-malware. So antivirus, anti-malware is a computer program used to prevent, detect, and remove malware. Antivirus software was originally developed to detect and remove computer viruses, hence the name. However, with the proliferation of other kinds of malware, antivirus software started to provide protection from other computer threats. Antivirus, anti-malware can offer protections for users and systems such as the following. It can block infections in real time. You can run periodic scans for known and suspected threats. You can run automatic system updates. You can automatically renew antivirus subscriptions to get access to updated threat signatures. It offers links to virus and threat encyclopedias. It provides system file inoculation. You can establish permission-based access to the internet, and you can scan, send, and receive emails as well as downloaded files. We have the recovery console. So the recovery console is a feature that provides the means for administration to perform a limited range of tasks using a command line interface. Its primary function is to enable administrators to recover from situations where Windows does not boot as far as presenting its graphical user interface. If resetting the PC is not sufficient, you can boot from a recovery disk to remove some infected files and restore your original files. To access the recovery console in Windows 10, just go to settings, update and security, and recovery. You got backup and restore. So infected computers can be troubleshooted from the recovery drive as well. This is a drive that is created and put aside in case it is needed. The recovery drive allows users to boot into safe mode without installing all applications and services. Once there, a user can remove infected files and reboot the computer to normal condition. And to access the Windows 10 backup options, you would just go to settings, update and security security and backup. Next, we have end user education. So an acceptable use policy or an AUP is a set of rules applied by the owner, creator, or administrator of a network, website, or service that restrict the ways in which the network, website, or system may be used and sets guidelines as to how it should be used. AUP documents are written for corporations, businesses, universities, schools, ISPs, and website owners, often to reduce the potential for legal action that may be taken by a user and often with little prospect of enforcement. A few ways to bring about end-user education to increase computer network security are as follows. You can teach people to not click on random links just because there is a link to click. You can use two-factor or multi-factor authentication. You need to be aware of phishing scams. You need to monitor your accounts to be on the lookout for suspicious activities. You need to keep your computer systems updated with the latest software patches. You want to only connect to secure networks. You want to secure your mobile devices. You need to be aware of social engineering practices and you need to back up your data. Software firewall. So a software firewall is installed on individual computers on a network. Unlike hardware firewalls, software firewalls can easily distinguish between programs on a computer. This lets them allow data to one program while blocking another. Software firewalls can also filter outgoing data as well as remote responses to outgoing requests. Windows 10 has incorporated Windows Defender Firewall into the 
the operating system, which prevents most common types of malicious traffic into a computer. And the user can customize Windows Defender Firewall settings as needed. And then we have DNS configuration. So the domain name system is a hierarchical and decentralized naming system for computers, services, or other resources connected to the internet or a private network. It associates various information with domain names assigned to each of the participating entities. Most prominently, it translates more readily memorized domain names into numerical IP addresses to locate web pages and websites. Domain Domain name server functions are included in Soho routers and in larger networks, a separate domain name server can be used. Hackers can use DNS records to create false DNS information that can redirect victims to fake websites to get them to download malware and or viruses. So vendors, they offer third party software that can provide DNS security to secure a system's DNS. All right, let's do some of this outstanding check on learning, shall we? So the first question is harmful programs used to disrupt computer operation, gather sensitive information or gain unauthorized access to computer systems are commonly referred to as what is it? Adware, malware, ransomware or spyware so harmful programs used to disrupt computer operations get sensitive info or gain unauthorized access they are called what the correct answer is this is malware or malicious software next question a collection of software tools used by a hacker to mask intrusion and obtain administrative level access to a computer or computer network is known as what is it a root kit? Is it spyware? Is it a back door? Or is it a Trojan? So a collection of software used by a hacker to mask intrusion and obtain admin level access to a computer. This is called a root kit. Next question. Which of the following enables troubleshooting a malware infected system that doesn't boot up? Is it Anti-malware application? Is it recovery console? Is it antivirus software? Or is it backup restore options? So which enables troubleshooting a malware infected system that doesn't boot up? The correct answer is the recovery console. All right. So in summary, we have talked about various types of malware and the various tools and methods to remove and prevent malware. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead, hit the like button, the share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 221,002 examination. And until next video, Video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.